Today I'll show you my process of selecting, processing and uploading my photos to iStock. Let's go! Hey guys, welcome back! If this is your first time here, my name is Luca and I'm a photographer and videographer. I'm selling my photos and videos online on iStock and Getty Images and I'm also making these videos about stock photography, videography, camera gear and similar stuff. So if you like this kind of content, subscribe to my channel. Okay, as some of you requested, today I'll show you how I select, edit and upload images from one of my stock photo shoots to iStock, which apps I'm using for that and yeah, along the way I'll give you some tips if I'll have any. Uh, but let me warn you, you'll never ever edit photos the same way again. Yeah, not really. I'm just kidding. It's nothing special. Also, as you see, I don't have my usual lighting setup here because when I'm editing photos, I want all my lights to be daylight temperature, which is around 5500 Kelvin. And that's why I only have this key light here, which is a little bit too bright for editing, but that's just for today, so you can see me. And also I have my Nanlite Peva tube in the back, also set to 5500 Kelvin. So let's just jump into the computer and do it. And there are two more things that we'll need, and those are water and of course, coffee. Okay. First thing when I come from the photo shoot, of course, I empty all my memory cards to my computer. I create a folder for that photo shoot and copy all my images to photos folder and all my videos to video folder. And I'm not totally satisfied with this uh, folder arrangement, so maybe I'll change that a little bit in the future. Uh, so if I'm shooting with more cameras, I create a separate folder for each camera so I have everything organized. I also create a backup copy of all those files to my Synology NAS just in case because we all know that eventually all hard drives fail. Then when I have a folder with images ready I open that folder with photo mechanic. Uh, okay. I use photo mechanic for selecting photos, so I give five stars to the ones that I think are good enough and one star to the crappy ones, to the ones that I'll delete later. And why I'm using photo mechanic instead of Lightroom to do that is that it's much faster this way, because when you go through images, it loads them instantly, not like Lightroom when it's just loading and loading and loading. Uh, so. Yeah, let's go through the images. I'll give five stars here. Okay, nothing, nothing. It's not really in focus. So we'll delete that. One star. Okay, five stars here. Five stars here. Um, I like this one. Okay, this is one star. This one's not in focus. Not in focus. Five stars here, let's go, five stars here. I don't like this trash can in the back, so maybe I won't edit this one, but anyway. Okay, five. Okay, one star, one star. Okay, I kind of like this one, five stars. Not really. Okay, one. Uh, okay, there's too much going on in the background, so this kind of images I just mark with one star. Da, da, da. Okay, oh, I like the lighting here. Nah, five stars, we'll see. Mm -hmm. This one's not in focus totally. 
okay this one yeah i like this one let's give this one five stars um, ta -ta -ta. okay and okay this one's not in focus and that truck in the back is too distracting and this one also okay i like this one so one star to this one and I just have to go through the whole photo shoot and just decide which one I like and which one I don't and that's pretty much it whoops and that's pretty much everything here so let's just uh, speed this up Okay, uh, that's it. I didn't go through all of them because it's just too much images for now, but I will in the future. And when I finish with this selecting, I apply filter to photo mechanic to only show me one star images. And I select all and delete all those images. And then I just close photo mechanic. I will edit images in Lightroom, so I have to import images into it. Lightroom will then automatically read all those metadata, so stars from Photo Mechanic, so I can apply a filter to only show me five star images here. So let's just do that. File, import photos and videos. Okay. Okay, it took some time to do that, but now I have all my images in Lightroom and I can apply this uh, five star filter here. And when I do that, Lightroom only shows five star images. Obviously there's way too many images here. Uh, it says 156 and I didn't go through all of them. So yeah, obviously I won't process all of them. Usually I just decide during the editing which ones I'm going to upload and which ones not. During the years I created a lot of presets to speed up the processing but lately I'm only using one and that's this one and then just adjust few things here and there. This preset works great on Nikon images but I just recently switched to Sony and on those files from Sony this preset is terrible so i'll just have to create a few more but let's just reset the image and start from scratch okay first thing what i like to do is to go down here in camera calibration menu and adjust this blue hue a little bit down and red hue a little bit up and then I usually change this setting. So exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. Okay, uh, usually I pull highlights a little bit down, shadows up, like that, whites a little bit up, blacks down. Yep, uh, I increase clarity a little bit. Maybe also vibrance. Okay. White balance, I think it's a little bit too warm. I would go something like this. Okay, highlights a little bit down. Shadows. Okay, let's go down here where we have uh, controls for each color and Usually I like to lift blue color a little bit because usually there's a lot of blue in 
white shirts. So let's see what happens here. Okay, yeah, much better. And also adjust blue hue. Okay, a little bit saturation in orange or not. Um, I usually change yellow hue because usually it's just too yellow, but but here in this image it's kind of okay. And ta -ta -ta, let's see what happens here. Ah, okay, maybe increase saturation a little bit. And sometimes I also add a vignette or I just pull down the exposure of the background. Okay, and maybe like this. Okay, so let's see what the difference is from this to this. Okay, let's say that I'm happy with this edit and when I'm done I press number 7 which marks this photo with a uh, yellow label. This way I mark all my files that I'll later export and upload to iStock. And now I want to apply these same settings to other images. Not all of them, but let's see. For example, these images here are quite similar. So I'll select this and one more. This one's a little bit different, but uh, you'll see why in a bit. And I'll sync these settings with all those images. Okay, now when adjustments are applied, I check every image and just adjust those which I'll upload later. So, let's see. Okay, this one a little bit too bright. Okay, let's pull exposure down. It's a little bit green maybe. So, I'll add a little bit of red tint here. Let's see. Okay, that's it. Next one. I'm not really happy with this one. Let's just move forward. Um, this one. Uh, and this one. Okay. It's also a little bit too green for my taste. Um, Exposure is a little bit too high. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, like this. Okay, that's it. So, don't like this so much, like this one actually, so I'll adjust it, highlight it down a little bit. Adjust the crop of the image, and yep, that's pretty much it. Let's move. Okay, this one, yeah, let's crop it a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, so here on this image we have a little bit different lighting, so uh, we'll adjust this one and then copy the settings to others that are similar to this one. So, yeah, let's do that. Okay, um, we have to crop the image this way and... Maybe something like this. Um, I'll also darken the surroundings a little bit. Oops, invert. Okay, that's pretty much it. And now we can copy this to similar images. And that's here and maybe we can add this one sync
and that's pretty much everything you just have to go through the whole shoot edit images and that's it okay let's do this tonk, tonk. Okay. let's just go quickly through this um Okay, I went through all the images and processed some of them and when I'm finished with editing I just press this yellow button over here so it only shows the images with yellow label and then I select all of them and export them. I have an export preset here, um, settings are nothing special so it's JPEG, sRGB best possible quality and that's pretty much it and hit export okay that will take some time but we still need to do some things on those images so we'll bring them into photoshop and edit them there and when we're done with photoshop that's it those images will be ready to upload okay let's open pho photoshop okay i usually just drag and drop 10 to 20 images at a time and edit them uh, sometimes also more i also tried 82 images at a time but yeah i'll just say uh, it was not a very good idea let's take this i don't know 12 images and bring them in here in Photoshop I'm using this Wacom tablet. This one is Intuos Pro S and it's great. Uh, once you get used to using this, you just can't go back to using your mouse. It's just much easier, more natural, more accurate. So yeah, just amazing. Uh, if you don't have a graphic tablet yet, just stop the video, go on Amazon right now and order it. I'll leave a link down in the description so you can check it out. Just check it out and trust me, you will love it. And it's just one of those things I can't live without. Okay, let's go. Uh, these images don't need much, but I usually check if there are any logos and buttons to remove. I'm usually using uh, so what's that? Cologne stamp tool or uh, or this patch tool or something similar. Okay, let's see this logo here. We'll just drag it here and it's gone. Um, let's see, usually there are some logos on belts or something. Uh, no need for skin retouching here and that's it. Another function of Photoshop that's just amazing is, uh, I think it's called auto color. So it just I just duplicate the layer and press shift control B. So it corrects colors automatically. Sometimes it works great and sometimes it doesn't. But I usually create this other layer and just set the opacity to around 30 or 40 percent. And that's it. Okay. And save the image. I can close the image and edit the other one. Okay, so we notice this logo here. Let's see what happens if I use content aware fill. Well, not very good. So we'll just move it like this. Much better. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's apply auto color. 
yeah a little bit too green for me so that save okay let's see what we can do here let's remove this i'll use clone stamp tool okay that's it uh, let's remove this one with patch tool uh, and that's pretty much it oh let's check actually an image oh, which one is okay let's see this one okay let's apply this auto color thing uh so yeah we can see that it's actually much better i'll use probably around 60 percent and we have to remove this logos from here sometimes it works great with content aware fill so let's see delete enter yeah not really here so um i'll try to do it with with what actually i'll just select this and drag it like this okay and i can use clone stamp tool now Oops. so yeah something like that there's a lot of different tools you can use so it's not only one way and um there can be some easier ways to do that but uh yeah that's pretty much it let's grab this um and move it here for example bah, not really um let's try it like this mm -mm. or we can just yeah use this clone stamp tool okay. or sometimes it can be a good idea just to select this for example like this copy to another layer and blur this area mm -hmm. well something like this a little bit more okay yeah and because it's now blurred we have to add some grain to it uh, nice okay let's see yeah something like that okay that's yeah not the best job but uh, yeah it will work um let's see if this can okay mm. okay yeah that's pretty good um i'll use clone stamp tool here to remove this one and this one will I, this one i can probably remove with content aware fill uh, okay almost and one more time here and tuck, tuck. okay yeah and that's pretty much it um this is blurred enough i think so yeah that's it let's save the image and boom oh uh, well yeah something like that so uh that's pretty much it when i have all the images ready i upload them to iStock through q hero 
So this is a software or platform actually that is uploading your images to ESP and of course iStock. So I can upload files here into a new batch and creative images next. Business on the go. Uh, next. And I can just drag these images here and the images will upload. And then of course you have to add metadata. So keywords, titles, description. And if you're interested in learning how to do that, I have a video about that. So I'll link it up uh, here, I think. So yeah, um, that's it. And yeah, that's uh, my process. So let me know if you have any questions about it, if you have any improvements for me or something. So uh yeah okay um that's it for today i hope you found some useful tips and if you did hit that like button down below and if you want to learn more about stock photography and other photography related stuff click on one of these links on the screen and of course don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell so you'll get notified about my new videos also if you have any questions suggestions let me know down in the comments and I will see you in my next video.